What is up, all you beautiful Poke Noob and Pokemon fans? We got an amazing episode lined up for you guys. I'm your host, Poke Noob, or Keegan, and I'm here with my lovely co host, Jill. Hi. And we are the Poke Noob Podcast. So today, on our episode 8, I believe, we're going to be talking a little bit about, for TCG Talk, we're going to go over our favorite shinies from the new Japanese Shiny Star V set. Couldn't really think of what to do this week, so we figured we'd just, you know, take it easy, talk about some pretty cards, and, you know, hang out, have some fun. But before we get into that, we're going to do our Poke News of the Week, and on the hunt for Poke News of the Week, this week we have possibly uh, being able to make Kadabra cards again, which is exciting. And then Jill has a very cool Etsy shop to talk about. But we are going to move right into Poke News of the Week. So today, for Poke News of the Week, we are going to be talking about Eri Geller. He's an Israeli-British illusionist, magician, television personality, and self-proclaimed psychic. So um, I've talked about this a little bit briefly before on our podcast. Um, before, let's see, in 2000... Geller learned of a Dark Kadabra card from the Team Rocket expansion and sued Nintendo for using his likeness without his permission. He thought the uh, card looked way too similar to himself, and, you know, he wasn't about that, so he had to lay down the line and sue Nintendo. Um, The card was named the Evil Youngerer in Japanese, as the entire Alakazam line is named after famous magicians, Kadabra bends spoons like Geller does, and that is actually one of his trademark magic tricks. So that is the reason he decided to sue, because he saw that uh, Kadabra was way too similar to him and doing the same kind of spoon magic tricks. Um, But going on, this Kadabra Pokemon has not appeared on a card since 2003's Sky Ridge. Since then... um, People can skip Kadabra cards through an evolution. They've been able to make Abra cards and Alakazam cards, but no Kadabra. And then starting in Gen 4, I believe, you weren't able to trade any Kadabra cards while holding an Everstone, which means it's forced to evolve into Alakazam. So you weren't even able to trade them. Recently, though... Pokemon TCG fans from Pokebeach.com, actually, they took up a concentrated effort to ask Geller to relent on his lawsuit. Their efforts and the efforts of other Pokemon fans may have played a role in in him changing his mind. So uh, whether or not Kadabra cards will actually appear in the future is up in the air. Um, Geller definitely expressed that he is okay with the idea of using Kadabra on the cards again. Uh, He tweeted out, um, he's truly sorry for what he did 20 years ago. Kids and grown-ups, I am releasing the ban. It's now all up to Nintendo to bring my Kadabra card Pokemon back. And it will probably be one of the rarest cards now. So much energy and love to all. So yeah, that's awesome for a card that, you know, people haven't seen in such a long time. You know, people who probably play today and collect today have no idea that this even happened because it was in 2003. So this is more of these classic collectors deal. But um, yeah, he had a change of heart because of all these emotional requests coming from fans around the world. And, uh, you know, obviously Pokemon's been blowing up massively and he probably, you know, feels bad because what if this was, you know, some kid's favorite Pokemon or something. So I find that awesome that he's actually releasing his so-called ban against Nintendo's Kadabra. And, you know, I'm excited to see some. I want to see some cool hollow Kadabras, maybe full arts. That'd be awesome. Got any opinions on uh, Yuri Geller here, Jill? I think it's really, like... Well, that I mean, it's sad to say though that it's twenty years later. He's deciding, um, just because of a Pokemon, uh, not a real person, not any looks or whatever, somewhat similar to him. You know, a lot of people just want to go and copy strike anything that had slight even resemblance to something. But I think it's really cool because you know, Abra, Kadabra, and Alexam are some really awesome Pokemons and some of the original uh, Pokemon that, you know, we have. Um, so yeah, it would be cool to see that. And I was reading more down, uh, as you were saying, about the uh, card being a really rare card and uh, possibly being worth something, because this is a card you haven't seen since 2003. I mean, God, I was like three years old then. <laughs> So, yeah. So, yeah. Um, 
It's definitely very interesting. I mean, like Joe was saying, kind of does suck that he actually did, you know, put a lawsuit against Nintendo because of a Pokemon, but, you know, it's all over now, and all those Alakazam fans can get back to where they wanted to be. But, um, yeah, I, I just find this really interesting because, you know, I, I didn't even know of this guy before, Yuri Geller, but the fact that, um, you know, Pokemon made a card similar to him in general, I I would, you know, be honored to be anything like a Pokemon card. So it is sad to see that he wanted to ban that, but, you know, it's awesome that he realized what he did was, you know, tearing down some kids, you know. It's a very interesting Pokemon. But uh, yeah, that was Poke News of the Week. Yet again, shout out to Uri Geller. Uh, we're going to roll right into On the Hunt for this week. Uh, what do you got today for us, Jill? Okay, so for On the Hunt this week, I have another Etsy shop. Uh, gotta love the Etsy shops. Uh, the name of the shop is JCB Vera. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. It's spelled J-C-B-D-E-V-E-R-A. Um, and they do hand-cut uh, wooden uh, evolution framed pieces of art they're really cool um so what it is is in um you know for an evolution of a certain pokemon uh the first one uh being featured is charizard so there's a little cut of charmander and then it goes into charmeleon and then it goes into charizard on the outer um part of the framed art um and i think that's really cool there's a bunch of different ones there's a dragonite evolution a turtwig evolution uh it looks like all the evolutions are here um i like the gengar one just because it's purple and i mean who doesn't like gengar uh there's I said there's a Bulbasaur one. I believe there's a... Yeah, there's a Pikachu Evolution 2 from Pichu, Pikachu, and Raichu. And yeah, it's just I think they're all just really cool. Like, some again, something... We're always trying to find something a little bit different um, each week. And he also does other stuff in the shop, too. Uh, it's all woodwork, I believe. It's all cuttings um, of other different um, popular things. I mean, there's... You know, there's these really cool Skyrim earrings I see, and there's also pins of different things. I see, like, D&D related stuff, which I, I also very much like. So, yeah. yeah. This is a really cool idea. I would love to have any of these in my room. I could imagine, like, all the evolutions all next to each other. That would look really cool. Um, I really like this Turtwig one just because of that green color. And then, and then I really like the Raichu one as well. But um, yeah, I just find these really awesome. I've never seen anything like this. And the fact that they can fit all these evolutions in one picture just makes it look awesome. Like the Gengar, Gengar one, like you were saying, is really cool too. And for, you know, handmade art, they're, you know, at a fair price, about $30. A lot of people seem to have them in their carts, but it doesn't seem like they're running low on stock. So definitely check this out. It says here that um, this artwork is fueled by lasers and hand assembled by himself. So obviously he's putting a lot of time just himself into these and you know I'm sure he would appreciate it just as much as we would having them in our room or wherever you want to put them. But yeah that was a great pick for this week. I really like this stuff. I don't think we've talked about anything woodwork related but also yeah the extra stuff he does as well he does these really nice wooden pins earrings stuff like that love the dabbing squid word can't get enough of that but uh yeah overall shout out to this guy he's making some cool stuff jcb d-e-v-e-r-a look him up on etsy guys got five stars five stars only about 750 sales but uh let's get him up there you know all right so that was really cool for uh on the hunt today. Definitely love those wooden works. But uh, we're going to roll right into TCG Talk for this week. Um, this week, like I said a little bit earlier, we both took a look at the full set list of Shiny Star V, the newest Japanese set. And uh, we're going to give a little top five of what we think are the coolest shiny cards from this set, or our personal favorites, I should say. So uh, we're going to start off with our number fives. Jill, what do you got for number five? Um... I got Shiny Sobble. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love Sobble. He's my favorite starter from um, 
Sword and Shield, probably my favorite Pokemon from Sword and Shield. I love Sobble. He's my favorite. I, I just, I don't know, you can ask Keegan. I, I think he's just the cutest little lizard. You mean, I think all the lizard Pokemon, like, are all trying to be scary and, like, you know, all tough and stuff. And then there's just Sobble, and he's just, like, and even, like, Drizzile and Intellion, they're not, like, like this threatening, li like, oh, watch out. They're, like, still, like, I don't know, I just... I like it. It's, I, I, I don't know, Sobble's cute. But yeah, I picked Shiny Sobble. I really like his little, like, I don't know what that would be, a fin or something, whatever's on the top of his head, his little hair. <laughs> it's Instead of it being, uh, I believe it's yellow and blue, it's like a pinkish, reddish blue, and he's like a, like a, almost like a grayish, like, light blue, and his cheeks are blue. And yeah, I don't know. That's that's it. I don't have much to say about it other than I just love Sobble. And... Yeah, Sobble's an awesome Pokemon. We definitely have some love for him, too. He was the first starter I picked when we went through Sword and Shield. You know, we got the stuffed Sobble over there on the table. I'm wearing a shirt with Sobble on him right now. But uh, yeah, good pick. I love that they, uh, you know, they take out some blue but put it in other spots like the cheeks. And then I love the pink little hair thing, little fin, whatever he's got. But yeah, cool stuff. Uh, my number five for this shiny set V, shiny star V set, is the shiny coughing. I mean, look at this guy. You know, everybody knows coughing as, you know, that purple boy. You know, he's got toxic green fumes around him, I'm pretty sure, usually. But this one is light blue, one of my favorite colors. He's just vibing out there. He's got stars around them. He's got purple gas, so he's a little stinky. But look at that face. You know, the light blue really touches him up, makes him look a little less scary, and maybe more of a Pokemon I'd throw on my team. As long as he keeps the stink down a notch, you know? <laughs> but yeah, my uh, number five pick is the shiny coughing. I really liked how they did the light blue, and I love the art in general. He just looks happy, and he's ready to do his job. Whether that be stinking it up, or tearing down other Pokemon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I do like, I, I do agree. I I like the light. I like the, some of the shinies were like, they weren't that great. It looks like they either switched around the colors a little bit or made them a li like slightly different. And I feel like if you're going to do a shiny, you need to spice things up. And that's Change definitely. Change the whole color, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely really cool. But uh, yeah, so I'm um, going into the number four pick. Uh, I did another little cutie. Uh. <laughs> Again, I don't know why um I did this. But I did the shiny um Yamper. Okay. I just one. I just love the art. Like he has a little heart on his butt, and he's pink. I mean, come on, it's a pink corgi. I love corgis. I I don't I don't really feel like I have to explain myself much on this. I just like the the different change. He still has some of the yellow. Um, and green in him, but he's mainly just, like, a pink color, and I don't know, it's just fun, and, yeah, again, nothing too, too crazy, but just a little, little yamper, and then, um, his, uh, evolution into Bolton, uh, it isn't as cool, in my opinion, even though I know I'm supposed to talk about one, but I don't know, it's like he, he's, like, a brownish, greenish, yellow mix of colors and that and the yamper is just a little pink fluffy yamper <laughs> yeah i really like this um the yamper you can definitely notice the difference i mean usually he's like a light brown with his other colors but they changed the light brown completely to pink um boltund is definitely a hard pokemon to determine the shiny part on it looks like they just changed his basic like navy green olive green color to like a maroony pinky color and then his eyes are oh i guess his eyes are usually yellow oh no they're usually like kind of green but they're straight yellow on this one i think but yeah i like those love the doggo pokemon so yeah that's a cool pick um, my number four for these shinies was a shiny orangaroo Ooh. you know i love the shiny orangaroo just because of all that pink and purple it just looks so cool i believe this is the same orangaroo used in a lot of common standard decks where you're able to 
take the top card of your deck and switch it with one of your cards in your hand. But uh, yeah, I really love this Oranguru for the card and just for the art style. I mean, usually he's like white with some pink around there, but it looks like they just got rid of all that white. Completely pinked him out. And he's got even like blue eyes, so I just really like this card. And then, you know, I don't, I don't know. Oranguru is really cool. I actually have a Shining Legends shiny Oranguru, but this one's just so much cooler. I mean, the Japanese cards definitely take it. I mean, look at that. Pink Oranguru. A pink monkey. I like Don't you just want to give him a hug? Yeah, he just looks like he will, like... I mean, I know one of his moves is a gentle slap. I just feel like he's this old, wise, like... Jungle monkey that everyone goes to for the wisdom. And yeah, he's, he's humble. Just gentle. Yeah, he's just gentle, like... You know, not at all threatening. He's just Oranguru, and... Just there to help you out support your hand you know but yeah that was my number four i really love the pink orangaro hands down it's definitely why i i only have a few shiny cards in person and one of them being jirachi another one being orangaro and i think a turtonator but yeah i really love those cards and i really love this pink orangaro what do you got for number three or four three three uh, I went with another electric Pokemon, uh, well, electric in this set, and that is Toxtricity. Ooh. Yes, uh, I just love the chain, it's like, he's typically, I believe, purple and yellow, right? Now, are you looking at the full art Toxtricity, or just the normal card? Just the normal card, I mean, I, I... I think they're still pretty much the same when I had the uh Yeah, color wise. Yeah, but um I I'm I just you know, I'm talking about what I see here. But yeah, I like the red I believe it's like a reddish pink almost and the yellow. It just looks cool. I don't know. It reminds me of like McDonalds or something. <laughs> like those two colors, like red and yellow, just kinda like are hard to see, but yet they're so cool looking together. I don't know. I just, I really like this shiny Toxtricity. Plus, Toxtricity is just pretty, all around a pretty cool guy, so. Yeah. yeah. And I like that his, the, the, you know, he has those, uh, his little electric spikes right now, and I don't know. I just, also, I believe, um, I do like that he's electric in this. I feel like I've seen him, um, have I seen him as a dark Pokemon before? He's poison and electric. Okay, so then that's what I'm thinking of. But yeah, um, pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, um, pretty cool card. Toxtricity is definitely one of the newest, I mean, coolest new Pokemon. I mean, just the fact that he has those different forms, you know, the low-key form and the high-key form that we talked about before. I don't know if they ever will do anything like that for the cards. I mean, I know it's in the game, but imagine... This shiny Toxtricity, right, with the red and the purple, and then instead of the electric bolts on his head being yellow, what if they were blue? What if it was like a low-key form shiny? That'd be really cool. That would be pretty sick, and maybe that's something that Pokemon will come out with in the TCG. Yeah. Drop us some shiny, low-key formed Toxtricities, please. Yeah, he's a really cool Pokemon. I love that he shreds the guitar. I love how cool he looks, just ready to, you know, thrash and smash the game. But, yeah, that's a definitely cool pick. And then the uh, V and the V Max shiny just look just as beautiful. But, uh, yeah, my number three goes to Shiny Obstagoon. Now, I believe in a past set, I want to say a Japanese one, they did a uh, full art. It was a golden card, but he was still shiny. He was still, like, blue and red on there. I forget what set that's from. It might be the Vivid Voltage Japanese set, but I'm not sure. Anyway, Shiny Obstagoon is just one of the coolest shinies. I mean, he goes from being, like, kiss black and white to red and blue. Like, he looks like he's going to be a part of a Power Ranger squad or something. And the fact that his tongue is blue, too, I don't know. I just love all the blue shinies. They just look so much cooler than what they used to be but i don't know this is sweet what do you think about this yeah i really like that combination too i like the blue i like but it's uh, like uh i don't know what 
color blue that would be, but the blue and red just really, like, you know, go together so well. And I've seen that with a couple of those. And actually, when I was browsing um, the list of shinies from uh, the Shiny Star V, I was even thinking about putting that card in there, but I, I was like, ah, I don't know. I had a feeling that I you might I was thinking of putting Toxtricity, too, but... I had a feeling you might have uh, picked that one just because, you know, I know what cards you like to use, too, um, True. playing, and you play the Eternatus deck. He's he's effective. And then in yeah. my Decidueye and Obstagoon deck, like, imagine, yes. you know, this is in Japan only, but they're actually able to play with these cards. So, like, imagine, you know, evolving your Lanoon or Rare Candy and your a zigzagoon into one of these shiny obstagoons like it'd be so much cooler and then actually they do have the shiny zigzagoons and lanoons too so you could just have a full set of those and it you know it all it does the same thing as the normal cool cards it would be such cool a nice flex deck. flex deck yeah all these shinies there's so many you could definitely make like a full deck of them what if they did like shiny trainers too that's impossible but <laughs> all right um so what do you have for your number two all right, this kind of goes on with uh, Keegan's idea of loving the shiny blues. It's uh, the shiny uh, blue Dragapult. Ooh, um, the V? Uh, I, I, I mean, I, for the Vs, I didn't really keep the V, because the, they're basically all the same. I'm just going off just of... going uh, by colors and stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like the V, the, the Dragapult V uh, art is actually the same as the just normal Dragapult, but it's a, a really cool different combination of colors. Uh, the bottom of him is a light, like a very light teal blue, and then the end of his tail goes almost to like a very light pastel blue to a white. Um, you know, the little... Uh, well, the thing on his head, his, I don't, I don't know, he looks like an airplane. <laughs> uh, it's black and like a greenish um, yellow color, like a lime color. I don't know, he just, you know, at first of all, I just really like Dragapult. He always looks like he's up to no good. Like, he's just like, he has those sly eyes, I don't know. But, um, yeah, I really, I really like the colors of this card. It's just, it's a little bit, I don't know, cooler, different, you know. Yeah, Dragapult is a really cool Pokemon, and the fact that they changed that, you know, basic red color to this, like, bright yellow, that's really the main change in there, but still, it makes him look like a Lamborghini or, like, a sports Yeah, no, car. I don't know why he looks like an airplane to me. I don't know if he's supposed to Yeah, be. yeah, he flies from that. Yeah, like, he just looks like a fighter jet, and I don't know why, it just makes me laugh. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> shout out to Max Mofo, actually. He says... Dragapult has the worst stat of the year award oh because gosh. he he shoots the little dreepies out of his head to attack his opponents. So, I mean, yeah, giving him that award would make sense. <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna go into my number two. I chose the shiny Crobat V Max. Now, this is just truly a beautiful card, and I'm actually gonna be talking about it a little bit later with my pokemon product for this week but i just really love this shiny uh v max crobat here i didn't even think that they were going to release a v max for crobat and from the uh, prices i've seen online it doesn't seem like it's as effective as the crobat v that's definitely still taking its place for that drawing support but still if we're talking about the colors and just how beautiful this card looks i think it's amazing i mean they changed the main purple from the crobat to a pink and then I believe under his wings were usually blue, but it's like a nice bright yellow and then all the glitter around him and the stars. It's just a beautiful card. I really didn't think they were going to release a Crobat VMAX, but the fact that they did and they made it shiny is just like, wow, I need that bad. Like, <laughs> I don't know. What do you think about this guy? When I saw that, I thought of you. <laughs> yeah, I I like that again. I don't know why the blue and the pink shiny Pokemon's are my favorite because Crobat's usually that dark purple color. Yeah, and this one is just this nice like little pink color. It's kind of sticking true to himself. And yeah, I don't know. I just think it's a really cool, uh, really cool card. Yeah, really cool it, it's awesome. Idea. 
And they might be a little basic in the sense that it doesn't have all the too much change, but Crobex pretty just basic guy. And I don't know, I like that his bottom of his wings are that yellow, like that bright yellow, like I don't know. It's awesome. I mean, you know, Crobat is definitely a monument with today's standard format and He's definitely, I feel like, gained a lot of popularity just because of the card game. So, I mean, the fact that there's a shiny VMAX for him, how could you not want that? Just because of the potential Crobat already has. But yeah, this is a true evolution in my eyes. (laughs) (laughs) Alright, so what do you got for your number one? Two words. Abominable Snowman. Abominable Snowman. Grimmsnarl V. Ah. He looks like an abominable snowman, and I love it. Like, I I honestly think this is... I know, you know, there's the Charizard, and, you know, this awesome... There's awesome cars. There's, you know, the Ditto, the Crobat, the... I personally just love this card. He looks like the abominable snowman. What else can I say? <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know. I just... Uh, it, it it makes... To me, it makes Grimmsnarl seem a little less threatening because usually he's this dark mass of a thing. And now I'm like, oh gosh, he's going to be at the t- in the North Pole with Santa Claus, like, helping elves out. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just... I like it. And plus, I love... I'm looking at the... Actually... This time I am looking at the V-card, Keegan, and I just love the white look of it with the rainbow background and the star. It just looks so cool. Like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. are, are you saying V-Max or just the V here? V, just the V. Yeah, I feel like it's more focused on them. But yeah, it is truly a beautiful card. I feel like, you know, we know Grimmsnarl is this dark, scary, green monster guy with some sort of greasy hair hanging all over him. But, uh... Yeah, I love the white version with the pink just because it's almost like a complete opposite of what Grimmsnarl actually is. And they, you know, they do, you know, slight color changes for these shinies, but I feel like they really hit it home with this one just because, I don't know, you know, you expect the dark, scary guy, but now he's an abominable snowman. Yeah, like out of all the uh, the ones that are in the set, this is the one that sticks out to me the most. And I don't know, I think... Like I said, everyone's probably trying to get that Charizard and all that. I want this card. I, I wouldn't want this card out of anything. And I don't know why. I just I just love how it looks. It's just a, such a cool card. Like, I cannot wait for the an English version of this to come out. Because oh, my God, I hope. That, it, it's just my favorite. But anyways... Uh, but yeah, I mean, like you were saying, you know, we talked about how there's a shiny Charizard V Max, and there's also another Charizard V in this set, and it's also shiny. And, you know, it, that would be pretty awesome to pull, I mean, just due to the rarity. But I would love to collect all these shinies just because they're all just truly beautiful cards. And you don't see a set like this often where there's over, what, 200 shinies? Like, looking at this Grim Snarl right here, you're on 321 out of 190. So the fact that there's like hundreds of secret rares it just makes this set so much fun to open but uh yeah that was an awesome pick for number one i think you're gonna love my number one here as well just because we truly can both agree how beautiful this card is it's the shiny lapras v max and <laughs> we were watching some youtube videos we saw this one get pulled we do not have it ourselves sadly but oh my goodness when we first saw this card it was just like wow how is that even able to be done on cardboard like first of all i mean basically the main aspect the lapras is purple like i know lapras is cool looking as blue i mean it it matches him you know water pokemon but the purple is just so nice and then when you're looking at this card it like has different like layers to it and you can see like i don't know it's just beautiful and if you don't have some sort of appeal for this card i'm a little disappointed in you because oh my god what what do you have to say about this um lapras is honestly one of my favorite pokemon just because i just i don't know I, lapras is so cool it's like a turtle the unicorn type i think if there was one card from this something. set <laughs> that i need a true psa 10 it would be this guy 
Just because, oh my god, I need this card so bad. It's so beautiful. <laughs> I've never seen. I a think card it's. Like I it. think it. I, I. I. I definitely think it. I mean, I already like the uh, V Max version of Lapras, anyways. I love like the little like smoke towers. I believe that's on Lapras' back. Yeah, that giant shell. Just yeah, ready I don't to know. I, I. It looks more intense on this picture. <laughs> looks like a boat. Yeah, it's. <laughs> It's it's a pretty cool card. I I have to give you that. We were both talking about the uh, before too, just the Lapras. Yeah, we don't need no Charizard. Just give us these Laprases and Grim Snarls, and we'll be good to go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was our uh, top five shinies from this set. It's truly an amazing set, and uh, me and Joe were actually looking into getting some more of these boxes just because. Wow, I mean, yeah, it's high class and they're really expensive, but it's worth it. So many shiny cards, I can't help myself. But uh, yeah, um, definitely a cool uh, card there, Lapras VMAX. Um, before we end TCG Talk for today, um, today we are recording on uh, December 1st. It's the first day of Christmas. I just wanted to talk about this. Uh, well, not Christmas, first day of December, but first oh, day Christmas of... season. Well, yeah, but I mean, some people say like the 25 days of Christmas. So, you oh, know. okay. I see what you mean. So we got this. Uh, we talked about it on an episode before, but we got this calendar from GameStop, actually. But uh, it has 24 gifts inside, and they're all little figures. And today, me and Jill got to open up the first day. And you want to tell us what we got? We got an Eevee. It was a cute little Eevee. So we were expecting probably like a starter the first day, maybe Charmander or something, but no, we got a cute little Eevee, and I like it. So uh, I'm going to be posting that on my Instagram story, actually, just me opening up the first day, and I'll be posting all the other days for this month of Christmas. Um, But yeah, we're going to take a little bit of a break, guys, and we'll be right back. <laughs> What is up, guys? We are back from our little break, nice and refreshed, ready to open up some cards. Uh, got an exciting couple packs here. You know, we've been doing Vivid Voltage recently, and that's exactly what we got here today for you. So uh, me and Jill both have our Orbeetle VMAX packs. You want to go ahead and start? Sure thing. Got to get the pack crinkles in there. Jeez, this is... Jill's been having a difficult time with why. <laughs> Vivid Voltage. Okay. There we go. There you go. I always try to not rip it down the side, but pull it at the top, because I get scared from ripping it down at the side. I don't want to, like... Yeah. So go ahead and read okay. your code. So our code is J6HJZTD EK4 M D L and that is for a sword and shield vivid voltage. Okay, and I'm gonna guess electric because we need that big fat Pikachu. Preferably a rainbow one. Got electric. Ooh, I don't electric. know why I didn't get guess. I was uh so we have a memory capsule. Cool. Oh, I love this. A giraffe rig. Oh, nice. I like that Pokemon. See, yeah, I haven't really... I don't see these that much. An electric. Okay. Electric. You electric. A Duskull. Nice. A Ferrisseed. Weird metal seed thing. A Rylou. A Sandile. A Whalmer. A Reverse Hollow Flareon, which is... Oh, that's cool. Is that a, a rare? Nice yeah, that's a rare. Nice. Nice little fiery boy. And a dreadnought. Ooh. Nice. Hollow? It's a, no, okay. Nice. It's normal. a normal dreadnought. Within the, I like it's it, though. nice. Yeah, well, we got the dreadnought uh, theme deck, actually, this week. Um, yeah. We played it hasn't been bit. shining too much yet, but... Yeah. Well, yeah, we neither... Me and Keegan both took turns playing it, and we both lost playing it. <laughs> White code, baby. All right. So, for this Vivid Voltage pack, 
You can get it online with DQJ, HLVG, XKK, QR6. All right, you want to guess my energy? I'm going to guess psychic. I'm going to say grass for the giant beetle. Ready? Bang! Fight it. Okay. We have a mag cargo. Big nose boy. Got a drone rotom. We got a swoo bat. Swoo. Got Oshawott, little otter boy. Got a pineco. Pineco. Still don't understand what kind of Pokemon this is. Bagworm. I have no idea what that means. It says it sticks tree bark to itself with its saliva, making itself thicker and larger. Elderly pine co are ridiculously huge. So maybe it's not actually a pine cone? It just sticks stuff to it and looks like one? I don't know. Whatever a bagworm is. We got Clefairy. Tynamo. Little fishy. Got a drop of milk. The cream Pokemon, Milsery. Ooh, a reverse hollow rare as well. We got a Xerneas. I love that Pokemon. All those rainbow colors on its antlers or whatever it is. And, ooh, another legendary. We got a hollow Dialga. I love that. Look at that. Look at those two together. They look good. Mm-hmm. Definitely some good pulls on your end. Yeah, I don't think I've seen Dialga in this set yet. We haven't been getting many hollows, but I do love the hollows that we have been getting. It's a cool one. Gotta love those legendaries. All right, so those were our packs for this week. Uh, definitely get those codes online if you guys play. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you can get a fairly easy start just by earning some coins on there, getting a theme deck or something. But uh, now we're going to roll into everybody's favorite segment of the week. What did Jirachi do this week? And uh, Jill, you want to start us off? So, um, we had Thanksgiving this week, which uh, is the lovely American holiday where you basically just eat dinner with your family and say what you're thankful for and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, Jirachi ended up getting his own special Thanksgiving plate. We don't really feed him people food that much just because... You know, once you start feeding them people food, they always want people food, and he just always is trying to find, he always gets into the cat's foods and the other dog's foods, and sometimes she gets fed human food, and, you know, we just need to make sure our little man, you know, stays healthy and all that good stuff, but anyways, you want to say what he got? Yeah, um, I believe we gave him some white turkey without the skin give him some mashed potatoes he loved that and what else was it peas and he got some peas so yeah he definitely enjoyed his thanksgiving dinner obviously he got all that turkey down first he was looking around for some more realized eh, i guess i'll eat my greens too and he went in on the greens but uh yeah we're definitely not going to be feeding him people food very often because as many people know pugs are prone to obesity and this man already over let's say 17 pounds, you know, we got to watch his weight. But uh, yeah, he had a really good Thanksgiving. The only reason we're talking about it this week is because, you know, it was after the point where we recorded last week. So we just had to express how awesome it is that Jirachi got to eat some people food. And he was really hyper. You know, that tail was curling all the way up. But uh, yeah, we're definitely not going to be doing this uh, often going to keep it to like a yearly thing you know thanksgiving celebration just so he knows that hey i'm not a person i don't get this food all the time but uh yeah that's uh jirachi for this week he had an amazing dinner along with the family and we were all very thankful but uh now we're going to move into gotta catch them all pokemon products i'm going to start off for this week So my product, as I said a little bit earlier, I was going to go in a little bit more for the Crobat VMAX. So they're releasing a Crobat Elite Trainer box. It's got the art of Crobat all over it. And it has, um, it's on the Japanese uh, Pokemon Center. So you'd have to go through a third party or, you know, however you guys get a hold of your Japanese products. But um, yeah, it's 
really cool looking product here. Everybody knows how amazing these Shiny Star V set cards are. We were talking about them earlier, obviously, but you get um, six from this uh, Elite Trainer box. You also get a beautiful Shiny Crobat V promo card, a holographic Dark Energy, and a Hiding Energy. Uh, all Japanese cards, and I honestly just picked this just because of the box artwork. I I don't know what's wrong with me when it comes to elite trainer boxes, but I can't help trying to collect them all. I mean, I started not too long ago, but now I'm already up to like seven elite trainer boxes from different sets, including one being a Japanese one, the Marnie Legendary Heartbeat. But yeah, I just really liked this uh, artwork here on the box, and I just really like what they're doing with the Shiny Star V. And yet again, I just love the promotion Crobat's been getting, you know. All the um, effectiveness he puts into the card game really pays off when Japanese Pokemon Center's trying to sell some products. Because who doesn't love a good old Crobat, especially a shiny one? But yeah, that's my product. You got any uh, opinions on this guy? Yeah, I like that we were just talking about the shiny Crobat. When instead of having to worry about the bullet, you can just already get one as a promo in the set. True. I don't know, we love Shiny Star V, as you can tell. I mean, I just think this is one of the best sets I've seen come out in the past, what, like six months that I've been really following Pokemon stuff. It's probably my favorite, uh, even over the awesome uh, Champion's Path. I don't know, Shiny Star V is just like, out. Th you know, you think there's something great and awesome coming out, and then something just comes out and it just goes well, yeah. above and beyond. And compared to Champion's Path, you know, you're only got, getting, I don't know, fairly over 70 cards. You know, it's not a big set. And then they drop this boy with over 300 cards of so many shinies. Yeah, we were talking, oh like, no, the shiny Charizard. And they're like, oh, well, don't you wait. All your favorite Pokemon are coming out as shinies. Exactly. So, this yeah, crazy. this is truly an amazing set. And I'm praying that it comes to America, even if they can't do all the shinies. I just hope they can do something similar. We need that shiny star bad. But uh, yeah, what did you what did you bring to the table this week? So uh, with the upcoming holiday of Christmas, I actually wanted to get uh, me and Keegan uh, some like Pokemon Christmas pajamas, and on the Pokemon store on the center, uh, they have. Uh, Christmas pajamas, and I just I was going to just talk about them as a whole, but I just had this one up. Um, it's my favorite. It's like a one piece, and it has all the Kanto uh, starters. So you have Bulbasaur, Charmander, and um, Squirtle. So I don't know. It's just really cute. I like the. I wish. Um, the only thing is, I wish the Pokemon Center did a cool, cooler, uh, like clothing items for Pokemon, because a lot of their stuff is kind of like, eh kind of bland, but I don't know. I really like uh, the idea of pajamas, you know. You're going to see me, Keegan, and Jirachi out on Christmas morning with uh, the, the family set pajamas. Because, <laughs> you know, we be like that. <laughs> Gotta rep that Christmas, gang. But yeah, I, I, like I said, there's uh, there's different ones. There's not just the one-piece ones. There's two-piece sets. Um, They come in male, uh, female, and children's size uh there's button down sets there's just the regular standard like pants and uh like almost like the jogger pants and a t-shirt and yeah i don't know it's just it's a fun little uh thing to have for uh Chris christmas time yeah i really wish they you know released something christmas pajama like that jirachi could wear obviously so we could all get you know matching pokemon pajamas for christmas but um i just wanted to mention i don't even know if this is new or not but the we talked about it a little bit before the show these pajamas here it's like a camo print with ditto being in it and he's like one of the camo shapes in there i really like that and they're also doing uh just a plain sweater for it and then um two onesies for male and female but yeah i really like this one too so i hope we get some cool christmas pajamas this year for the uh, season, you know, especially Jirachi. We hopefully will find something for him, too, and we'll definitely be posting pictures on his Instagram account. You can uh, follow him at Jirachi.pug. He's got some cool content over there. You guys got to check him out. Give him some following. Give him some attention. But, uh, yeah, those were our 
Pokemon products for this week. Definitely go check those out, guys, if you're interested in the Japanese Shiny Star V set, or if you're interested in getting cozy and comfy for Christmas, check those out. But now we're going to roll into our last segment of the day. we got our Pokemon trivia. So last week we asked you guys, what is Ash Ketchum's first name in Japan? Jill, you want to take a guess? Um, I believe I know the answer to this because we, I look at the notes. So do you want me to just say what the answer is? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's a, oh gosh, please just say if I, if I butcher this badly, I'm so sorry. Uh, Satoshi? Yeah, I think Satoshi, it? Satoshi, Satoshi, something like that. But uh, yeah, his name over in Japan in the shows, I assume, is Satoshi. And uh, this was easily translated over to the English episodes and whatnot because, you know, A, S, and H are all in the word Satoshi. So, quick shortening there. But this week for our Pokemon trivia, another question about our friendly neighborhood Ash Ketchum. Um, what is the first Pokemon that Ash Ketchum actually catches on his own? I mean, we know he was gifted Pikachu, I believe. So, what is the first Pokemon he was able to throw that Pokeball out and catch on his own? But yeah, um, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. Uh, definitely check us out, guys, on anchor.fm slash Podcast. That's where most of our episodes are being released, all of them actually. Um, you can actually check out all of our platforms that we're on over there. We got Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, YouTube. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, whatever you want to do. But I mean, yeah, definitely uh, you know, try to put in some reviews if you can. Five star, five star. It really helps us out. Gets us up there at the top of the podcasts for Pokemon. And, you know, that's what we're trying to do. Get the word out. Let you guys hear what we have to talk about. And have some fun with it. But, uh, yeah, definitely check out our email as well. If you guys send in some emails, we'll be answering questions on the podcast. And that would be a lot of fun. Uh, you can email us at pokeypodcastmon at gmail.com. That's P-O-K-E podcast M-O-N at gmail.com. But overall, this has been a really fun episode. I mean, you know, I love talking about shiny cards. I love talking about cards in general. But, I mean, the fact that they're different colors, you know, really gets me going. Um, but, yeah, anything you want to say before we close it out, Jill? Um, no, not really, other than, you know, same old usual stuff. Same old usual stuff. That's how we do it over here, baby. All right, you guys have a great day. Have a great rest of your night, whatever time it is you're listening to this, and uh, we'll catch you next week. Thanks for listening. <laughs>